Are you ever excited to calculate the required rate of climb or descent? Well, neither am I! This video will share how to confront these types of questions that are especially common in the FAA knowledge test for a pilot's instrument rating. These types of questions almost always include associated figures, charts, and diagrams to refer to while calculating for the answer. But I don't even want to look at them! Let's practice with some of these types of questions step by step hopefully in a way to make them as least painful as possible. In the following questions, ground speed and glide slope information will be very involved. They are often abbreviated in a way that may potentially be confusing. Ground speed is usually abbreviated to GS, which makes sense. And the term glide slope is sometimes abbreviated as G forward slash S. However, this is not always consistent, and there will be occasions where you may find glide slope represented also as a GS, like ground speed. However, don't worry because when these abbreviations are put into context, it will be quite clear whether you are looking at ground speed or glide slope information. Ground speed is given in knots, with very few exceptions where in some cases we may be presented with it in miles, but both of these units we are already very familiar with regarding to units of speed. Since glide slope is always referring to an angle, it will be given in degrees. So that's all, now let's move on to the first question. The questions often include a given speed, in this case, we will be traveling at 120 knots per hour. And we will also be provided some figures to look at to help with finding the answer. So here we are looking at the applicable approach plate for the ILS runway 36 left approach. Towards the bottom right area in the profile view, you will see a small piece of text stating GS 3.00 degrees. Yep. That's saying that this approach uses a glide slope angle of 3 degrees. 3 degrees is very common with most approaches that are located in relatively flat terrain with no obstacles. However, don't assume you'll always have situations with a 3 degree glide slope. Especially in mountainous areas or with obstacles, the 3 degree angle may no longer be used. With the next provided figure, we are looking at the rate of climb and descent table. Oftentimes, this table will come in very handy and eliminate the need for additional manual calculations. I think my mood for this question is already improving. With this table, all we have to do is simply go up to the top row, which would be our given ground speed, and select the column that lists 120, and then travel down that column until we line up with a glide slope column on the farthest left side, listing our given glide slope angle of 3.0 degrees. We will eventually cross at a point where we will be given a number of 637, which is basically saying we need to be descending at a rate of 637 feet per minute. And that's how we solve that question. Not too bad! But unfortunately, I will have to keep on sharing more sample problems that are not all solved this same way. Here we will be referring to a different approach plate, but we will be working with the same ground speed of 120 knots per hour. Here is a preview of the provided approach plate for this question and we will again be taking a closer look at the profile view section area towards the bottom left. Referring back to the question, it was asking about a specific position that is in between IGPO 11.3 DME fix and IGPO 7.3 DME fix. Here we see highlighted in green on the profile chart is the IGPO 11.3, also named Kavdu, and highlighted in orange is the IGPO 7.3, also named Hadat. 
You will notice that the altitudes are also indicated below each point. At Kavdu, we would need to be at 3,500 feet, and by the time we reach Hadat, we would need to be at 2,300 feet. At Kavdu, the 11.3 represents the number of miles that that position is from the DME station itself. So as we keep flying forward in the approach, it makes sense that by the time we reach Hadat, that number would be down to 7.3. If we illustrate this path, it will look something like this. Starting up at Kavdu, we are 11.3 nautical miles from the station and up at 3,500 feet. We will need to descend down towards Hadat and we need to make sure by the time we reach Hadat, we will be 7.3 nautical miles from the station and at 2,300 feet in altitude. By finding the difference between the altitudes and distance from station between these two positions, we will find that in this transition, we will need to lose a total of 1,200 feet of altitude and we would have traveled 4 nautical miles between Kavdu and Hadat. Now we know the vertical and horizontal distance that needs to be traveled to get from Kavdu to Hadat. Remember in the question, we were given a ground speed of 120 knots per hour. We will use the basic equation here to find the time it will take to travel the horizontal distance of 4 nautical miles across with our ground speed. By dividing the 4 nautical miles that will be traveled by our speed of 120 nautical miles per hour, we will find that this 4 nautical miles will be traveled in 0.03333 hours or 0 0.03 repeated. To get the equivalent number in minutes, we will multiply that number by 60 and get a total of exactly 2 minutes to travel the distance of 4 nautical miles across to Hadat. Now that we found that we have 2 minutes to lose that vertical distance of 1200 feet, we'll simply divide that by the 2 minutes we have we will have 600 feet per minute as the rate we would need to accomplish the vertical descent. Well, I think I like the first question better with less work involved. But why not make it worse by adding even more questions with math problems? Here is another one for practice, this time with instrument departure procedures. With this question, we were given a ground speed of 120 knots along with two figures, one being the departure procedure and the other being the rate of climb or descent table that we are already familiar with. Unfortunately, with the written exam, you may be provided with figures and information that may not be useful to finding your answer. Sometimes this is done as a distraction and in this particular case, the climb and descent table will not come in as handy as the first time, sadly. We just don't have the pertinent angle degree information present in this scenario that could have made this table more helpful, but we will find the answer with other given information here. We will find on the departure procedure that there is a note section stating that for this departure we would have to climb 385 feet per nautical mile traveled, at least up to 6,000 feet. Since rate of climb or descent is presented in a number of feet per minute, we have to find how fast we are really going per minute with our given ground speed of 120 nautical miles per hour. We will find that by simply dividing our speed of 120 nautical miles by 60 minutes, which gives us a converted rate of 2 miles being traveled per minute. Now remembering back to the departure note of 385 feet needing to be climbed per mile, we know that our ground speed is covering 2 miles per minute in the horizontal direction. So we would need to multiply that 385 by 2 which will give us a climb rate of 770 feet per minute going in the vertical direction. In order to maintain any angle of climb, if our ground speed doubles, 
our rate of climb needs to double as well, and vice versa. They are proportional to each other. So for example, if we were traveling even faster, say we were covering 3 miles each minute, we would have to multiply 385 by 3, which would increase our required climb rate to 1,155 feet per minute. So do you feel like you've had enough? I personally find written tests to be a real chore to review for, but congratulations on making it this far in your practice. I hope this video has helped you in your studies and feel free to let me know if you have any questions or would like another video to cover more in depth about any specific area or subject. I am working on a few ideas for my future videos and I look forward to some new and more refreshing topics to cover and I'll see you later.